kind of they kind of border a little bit on the gray or maybe even black line whereby you know they have to cloak their links because facebook doesn't or google doesn't allow them to do it they have to farm mm-hmm. facebook accounts to promote their offers um you know they have to set up flogs a lot of uh, i think cpa markets set up like fake news websites to promote their offers because conversion rates are so much higher that way hello everyone today we've invited the ceo of success vantage alvin huang on our show um success vantage has started in 2005 specializing in creating self-help and personal growth products. Since then, they've grown at a phenomenal rate, doubling their staff and their revenue every year. Um, in fact, last year, they've achieved about 4.9 million in sales. Mm-hmm. So today, um, we just want to ask Alvin on things like business growth, marketing, funnels, and how he has achieved his results so far. Um, so Alvin, before we jump right into the deep end, could you do a brief introduction about yourself, who you are, what you do, and what problem does success advantage solve? Okay, sure. Uh, thank you, Tony, for having me on this show. Um, well, you know, I, I've actually start, I studied in Singapore Management University, and that was when I first got started uh, with the internet. Okay, but back then, I remember I was taking care of an ex-girlfriend, and that's where I read online that you could actually make money on the internet. So I started, you know, exploring. I started taking, buying other people's eBooks, courses, and you know, I was very fortunate back then uh, when I started out. You know, straight off the bat, within one month, I could make. I was making like two hundred. Uh, sorry, two thousand to three thousand dollars in profit every single month while still studying in university. Um, when Success Vantage first started out, we were uh, providing information, uh, info training products in the form in the areas of personal development. But in the recent two years, we have actually expanded, uh, you know, by offering um, products in the health niche and even uh, going as far as to uh, manufacturing and producing our own brand of health supplements and marketing them online at the same time. Yeah. So um, the first question I want to ask, right, is that um, as you. Success, so success advantage, most of your customers, in fact, about 90% of them mm-hmm. um, exist outside of Singapore. Yes. So my question is, how do you get paying customers overseas without meeting them in person? We started, uh, I guess, back then in 2005 in Singapore, you know, um, a lot of people aren't really open to buying things online. So that's why naturally we, gravi- we, you know, we started marketing to uh, customers overseas, uh, predominantly US, because they were already very comfortable with buying things online. And you know, so we actually modeled uh, what other US marketers do. So we started setting up websites and we saw in a way, uh, we set up websites in a way which is called direct response marketing, mm-hmm. uh, in a sense whereby whenever a person visits any of our websites, and we have you know, a lot of those, um, each of our website would only you know, do one thing in particular. It would either try to collect a lead, collect their name and email, and in return, we'll give them something of value, a gift, a report, a video, or audio training. And, or if not, our websites are just catered for, um, you know, to persuade the customer um, that if this is a solution that they want to make a purchase immediately. So it was very direct response uh, kind whereby, you know, you, if you look at a sales page, it's either a, a video or in, back in those days, it was a long sales letter. I think a lot of people find them a little bit scammy or so, you know, mm-hmm. even when I first saw them, I found them, oh, what's this? You know, you can only read and buy or leave the site. So mm-hmm. that's how we sell online. Um, but at the end of the day, I would say uh, people, consumers buy from us because um, and at the end of the day, we are providing a solution to their need. If they have a pain point, a problem that our product, uh, you know, offers to solve for them, then they would then buy it. And of course, you know, we use, uh, for us, a lot of our information products are sold through ClickBank, which offers, uh, you know, no question, our 60-day money-back guarantee. So I guess in that sense, it hasn't been an issue selling things online, to be honest, um, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe also because of the price points of the items we're selling. Uh, we mainly specialize in selling uh, items that range from $20 US to $100 maximum. Yeah, so maybe that's why, um, you know, for us, we've been relatively successful. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, great, great. Interesting. So you mentioned a bit about you know feeling like scammy you've seen scammy <laughs> pages and, and it's the thing about affiliate marketing because i feel that many many people that talk about affiliate marketing through that mm-hmm. it was a bit scammy they don't, they don't really know whether to trust it and for you um you mentioned earlier that it's about almost 30 percent of your business yes, you know, yes affiliate marketing so in your opinion why do you think there's such a bad reputation for it and how can affiliate marketers build a successful business? Okay, uh, maybe to start off with, um, I think affiliate marketing is a very broad term and it encompasses a lot of different businesses. Uh, more importantly, I think maybe the bad part, the bad reputation is more on the portion of CPA marketing, you know, the CPA networks, whereby, you know, there are these networks and you can sign up to be an affiliate and you can promote different offers, you know, 
uh, not necessarily every offer you need to make a sale. Sometimes you need, you know, people submit their emails. They call it zip submits or something like that. Or maybe a mobile app install. Or maybe you need someone to take up a trial offer, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in the CPA world, of course, there's, uh, there's white and there's black. There are a lot of people who are very aggressive uh, because uh, in affiliate marketing, you can earn a lot of money. I mean, there are a lot of friends who make a lot of money in just, you know, in one or two months, you can boom, you can earn over six figures. You know, it's, they can do that. Uh, and because of that, they tend to be very, I would say overly aggressive perhaps in, when, in the ways they market and because of that you know I think uh, if you attend uh, if you go to you know uh, if you attend CPA programs or whatnot you see that they kind of they kind of border a little bit on the gray or maybe even black line whereby you know they have to cloak their links because Facebook doesn't or Google doesn't allow them to do it they have to farm mm -hmm. Facebook accounts to promote their offers um, you know they have to set up flogs a lot of uh, I think CPA markets set up like fake news websites to promote their offers because conversion rates are so much higher that way. For us, uh, we don't do it that way. Uh, we just use our list because we have a list of about 1.4 million uh, prospects and customers across different lists. And when we make an offer to an offer that isn't ours, uh, we earn a commission on the sale, you know. So my form of affiliate marketing is a bit different whereby we actually promote it to our list and if they buy, we earn a commission. So in terms of affiliate marketing, there are different, uh, I would say, categories or genres. Mm -hmm. So, for the really aggressive ones, you know, they, they tend to be a little bit more black hat. So, I mean, maybe that gives it a more, um, you know, a bad reputation. But if you think about it, like even Amazon has an affiliate program, right? It's called uh, Amazon Associates. And that's, a, but they don't pay out a lot. I think they pay out up to maybe 4%. If you, you need to do a lot of volume, but that's the whitest white part of mm -hmm. affiliate marketing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, this is only part one of the three-part series. Check the description below to listen to the rest of our amazing interview with Elvin.